Hello everyone, in this video we'll be looking at Effects Collection 3 from Arturia and use it to create preset audio effect racks in Ableton Live. Be sure to download the live set, link in the description. By the way, for more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and ding the notification bell to know immediately when new content comes out. In Effects Collection 2, Arturia included four previously available modulation effects and added three new effects aimed at the mixing process. Effects Collection 3 has four additions that once again help round out Arturia's offering. Tape Mellowfy, a tape emulation effect, and FX Fragments, an experimental granular synthesis effect, were previously available. Dist Tube Culture, based on the Culture Vulture Distortion Rack Unit, and Dist Op Amp 21, based on the Sans Amp line of guitar pedals, kick off the new distortion category. FX Collection 3, with a total of 26 effects, is currently $399 here in the States. That's a little over $15 per effect, which Arturia claims you'll actually use. The installation process was a breeze in the Arturia Software Center. But be aware that all effect plugins will be updated this time around. That's because they were given an AB parameter comparison switch, as well as a preset browser makeover. Very welcome additions indeed. If you're picking up the collection at this point, that's a lot of new effects to learn. So here's a couple things to try. First, every Arturia plugin has built-in tutorials, which are very helpful for getting started and for more advanced sound design tips. Second, be sure to check out the presets. They really are expertly crafted. Many of them are geared toward dance music producers, as you can see by filtering the presets in the browser. But with this new release containing distortion effects, Arturia are also widening their market to pop and rock producers. So start with a handful of effects, go through the tutorials, browse the presets, tweak and make them your own, and you'll see how easy it is to start making good sounding music. All right, so we are in Ableton Live now, and first thing I wanna show you is how some of these effects sound. Really quick, I have uh, some drums, some bass, and an ARP. Each one of these tracks has an audio effect rack. Each audio effect rack has four of the effects that come with Effects Collection 3. Each one of these has at least two of the new effects that come with Effects Collection 3. What I'm gonna do using key mapping, and I've done a lot of key mapping, which you should check out when you download this live set, is uh, make it so I can switch between different macro variations, and I'll go over how to create that in a bit. First thing you're gonna hear is just dry, no effect. Actually, you'll hear a little bit of tape noise from uh, the Mellowfy. Then I'm gonna go through the different variations and you'll see what's going on with these effects. <laughs> So as you can hear and see, there's a lot changing, a lot happening between each variation, especially between the initialized and variation one. Variation one is what I would actually use for the main parts of a track. Variation two and three, I would use for more transitional sections, breakdown sections. So I'm going to deactivate the demo group track and I'm gonna activate the tutorial group track. And before I even get into it, I just wanna show you when you download this, you can turn this little macro, this one macro here, go between the different steps and there's step one, step two, step three. And if you hover over this with the info view open, you'll see step-by-step step what to do. So have that in mind. Now I'm gonna switch over to this group track and actually build it from scratch right now. So here is our loop again, uh, this time it's just the drums. Nice. And what we're gonna do is find different effects that we wanna add to that. We're gonna combine them together into a rack. So let me show you how to do that first of all. Let me fold this up by double clicking. I'm gonna to go to the new effects and I'm just gonna add each one of these. So the op amp uh, 21, tube culture, fragments, and mellow fi. No particular order here. I'm gonna select one of them, the first one here, op amp 21. Hold down shift and then select mellow fi down here. And you can see that all of them are selected now. It's a multi select. You can right click on any of them now and say group or command G, control G on PC. And now they're part of a group. So what we can do is show the macros. By default, there are eight macros and we can go down to one if we wanted to, or we can go all the way up to 16 macros and you can right click on them and change the color if you wanted. 
Then uh, you can click here and see the variations, the macro variations. We'll see that's how that's very cool in a second. So let's get rid of this because I already have one here. It has 16 macros color coded by the effects. And like I said, you pick four effects that you want to use. But here's the, here's the extra trick. Find a preset that you like that's close to what you kind of want to go for. So I have four effects here from the full collection of Effects Collection 3. And first one is Filter Mini. So it sounds like this. A little soft. I'm going to turn it up a bit. Cool. I'm going to go back down to negative six decibels. Uh, so that's uh, Filter Mini. Then we have the BL20 uh, Flanger. That one's a lot of fun. Moving on to Effects Fragments. Brand new. Love that one because it's so weird. And then we're going to move on to Tape Mellow Fi, which is adding a lot of character to the sound. Let me actually turn that off and on for a bit. I can actually do that within. A lot of drive and noise coming from that preamp section. Okay, so those are the four presets that I've selected. What we need to do now in step two is actually map the parameters that we need. So to do that, what we're, what we're gonna start is going into the filter mini and opening up this, let's turn it on. And I'm gonna double click here and there's this little arrow called the unfold device parameters. And then we can see all the different parameters that are up here. And I'm only gonna use four of them. It's common to try and map all the different parameters that you can. My suggestion is to just stick with a handful of them. I'm going with four here because I have 60 macros, four effects, kind of divide them up evenly. So I'm going to start with the cutoff. And what you can actually do, this has to be open, first of all, is click on the device up here and then um, map that. But to do that, we have to be in mapping mode. So I enter mapping mode here. See the browser changes to the mapping browser. Click on filter and we can map it right here. And it changes the name as well. Then the next thing I want to do, let's see, is emphasis, which is actually kind of just like resonance. And I'm going to go ahead and rename that as res for resonance. Then I'm going to go to, let's say the smooth here, the smooth parameter. I'll map that. And then last thing I want to do is the dry wet. And I usually put the dry wet right here. This is either dry wet or the overall volume of an effect in this bottom right hand corner. All right, so that is the mini filter. Let's go on to the next one. We can fold this back up. Uh, let's go ahead and exit mapping actually and just turn these on. And then we're gonna go into the flanger, open this. Let's enter mapping mode again, and I'll open this up. And the four parameters that I want, let's see, let's start with the rate. We're gonna map that here. We'll map the depth right below it. The regeneration, which is kind of just like feedback. And then we'll have the mix down here as well. So some, some consistency, dry wet. Then we'll move on to fragments, open this up. And there's a lot going on with the hood if you hit the advanced button, um, but we don't need everything. We're just gonna use the main controls up here. Kind of a trick is to just look for the biggest and brightest uh, knobs, parameters, sliders, whatever you can find. So I'm going to map first the intensity here. Oh, and make sure that you have this open and you can see all of the parameters. We're gonna to go to intensity, map that. And you can see that it's mapped as macro one. Don't be confused by that. Um, we're gonna to go to effects and have that be, let's see, here. Then we're gonna go for feedback. We'll take this and map it here. Then we're gonna go for the grain mix and map that here. Okay, and you can see that these are already set to where they were in the effect before. We can exit that now, uh, fold this back up. Let's go to Tape Mellow Fi, open this up. And the four effects that are four uh, parameters I want, let's see, drive for sure. Uh, I want the filter to be right here. I'm gonna go for the wear of the tape. It actually has a lot of distortion, which is really nice. And uh, the output, I put that in the bottom right hand corner. So those are the four um, effects macroed up now onto step number three. So on this final step, we're taking advantage of the macro variations. Now, first thing we wanna do is kind of <laughs> destroy what we did, which is just set all of these to zero, which will change the position of the um, parameters within the effects themselves. 
We're gonna change all of these except for the filter. That's gonna to go to 64 right in the middle because this is a tilt style filter. So all the way to the right will be a high pass all the way to the left or uh, counterclockwise will be um, a low pass filter. And the middle at 64 will be zero or kind of um, no filtering. All right, so we set all of these to zero. Cool. And I know that the print, uh, zero for the output of the Mellowfy is uh, around 96. Not exactly, but it's it's just about. Okay, so this is kind of the starting point. Remember, we, we started with presets, but we're not really using the presets just as is. We're gonna change the parameters um, of what we've chosen around those presets. So what we just made here is kind of our initialized preset. So we're gonna create a new variation and it's, gonna, it's called variation one, but we're gonna rename that. So you can do, we can right click and say rename or command R or control R. And we're just gonna call this init or initialize. Cool, so every time we press this play button, it's gonna go back to this. Now here's something interesting. There is a random button up here. And if we click this, it's gonna change all of these parameters, which is a lot of fun. It helps you you know, find something new that you might like uh, get inspired by something really, really quickly. There is a problem though. I would suggest that you don't allow anything that controls volume to be randomized, which is that's what right here. So right click on that and you wanna select exclude macro from randomization. It's not gonna be randomized at all. So um, you can keep clicking this no matter how many times and this is always gonna stay where it is. All right, so really quickly randomize and create a new variation here. Randomize, create a new variation. Oops, so I, I went back after randomizing to this first one. So, so you see how the play buttons work. They go back and forth between those two snapshots. So let's make a couple more variations now. Hit new, randomize, hit new. And I have four different um, variations as they're called, but three of them I'm actually calling variations. First one is initialized and three variations here. I already have this set up for you in this track here, so I can stop this. Go to step number three, press play. And there's the initialized uh, preset, but then we can go to variation one. Variation two and variation three, and I'll leave it to you to investigate on how in var variation three it actually sounds like it does. It's very interesting. So those are the three steps. Kind of group your effects together, um, map everything as you need to, and then create your macro variations. There you go, everybody. That's my quick introduction to Arturia's brand new effects collection three, which includes Op Amp 21, Tube Culture, Fragments, and Mellow Fi. And I showed you how to create a preset audio effect rack in Ableton Live. They really, really, really speed up your workflow and tailor things to what you like. So best thing to do is to download some trials, see how these sound in your work, and purchase if you love it. I am Pat Kupo, here for Attack Magazine. I'll see you next time. Thank you.